Hey, Dr. Kent DeLay here, board certified urologist in South Carolina. Today, I wanna to talk about interstitial cystitis versus a urinary tract infection. So I use this channel to educate my audience on topics relevant to urology, men's sexual health, as well as other healthcare topics of interest. So I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can see future content as it is released. So let's start with what is cystitis or a urinary tract infection. So cystitis is inflammation of the bladder, which is associated and caused by the presence of an infectious microorganism, usually a bacteria, but less commonly a fungus and much less commonly a virus. These infectious organisms and the inflammation can cause a number of symptoms, including urinary frequency, urgency, suprapubic pain, as well as burning with urination. Now, the symptoms tend not to cause systemic signs like fever and chills. This is more commonly associated with a kidney infection or what we call pyelonephritis. The thing you need to know about a urinary tract infection or cystitis is if it's caused by a bacteria or fungus, this is easily found, isolated, and identified on a urine culture where you provide a urine specimen, we grow out the infectious organism, identify it, and can identify the appropriate treatment. When the appropriate treatment is given, the symptoms can go away. Now, there are more complicated situations where we don't completely eradicate the bug or the bug comes back in short order and the symptoms come back. But in general, if we treat the urinary tract infection, we can make symptoms better. Now, interstitial cystitis is not an infection. It is inflammation of the bladder, which is caused for reasons we don't totally understand in all honesty. And that is why it is what we call a syndrome. And a syndrome is a grouping of symptoms which are predictably clustered together, but don't have a clear identified etiology or cause. Now, the symptoms associated with interstitial cystitis, or it is this, as it is sometimes called chronic pelvic pain syndrome or chronic bladder pain, are pain that is perceived to be coming from the bladder as well as urinary symptoms like frequency and urgency. It can also be accompanied by other signs of what we call pelvic floor muscle dysfunction, which is tightness in the pelvic floor, slow stream, pain with sexual activity, and things of that nature. The important difference between this and cystitis, which is infectious, is that when we do a urine culture, we would not identify an infectious organism there. So interstitial cystitis is not an infection. It is a syndrome. Now, we will have patients who come in who have multiple episodes of urinary pain and symptoms who have been told they have recurrent UTIs, but they've never actually had a positive culture. These patients probably have chronic bladder pain or interstitial cystitis. Now, there is not an easy test to identify interstitial cystitis like there is cystitis or urinary infection. IC or interstitial cystitis is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning we've ruled out things like urinary infections, cancers, stones, etc. So once we've ruled all those other things out and the symptoms remain, we can usually predict the cause is interstitial cystitis. And then we can use that information to identify treatments that would help the patient. Now, unlike cystitis or a urinary tract infection, we aren't able to prescribe an antibiotic and make the symptoms go away. The treatment is more complicated. It usually requires multiple angles, multiple approaches, and multiple tools to get the patient better. But that being said, with a persistent approach and a willingness to experiment with different lines of therapy, we can make most patients with interstitial cystitis have an improved quality of life. So once again, to break this down, cystitis is a urinary tract infection caused by a microorganism, and when treated, the symptoms will go away. Interstitial cystitis is chronic pelvic bladder pain without a clear cause and is not caused by a microorganism and is poorly understood. Nonetheless, we do have approaches that allow for patients to be treated and have an improved quality of life.